is News 25 with Unette Gentry. News 25, local news you can count on. News is brought to you by J.K. Nelson Law. Give them a call, 727-9900. News is also brought to you by Desert View Hospital. You can count on us. Hi, good evening, Nevada. It's John Kohler filling in for UNET Gentry. This is Thursday, April 27th, 2023. Leo Blundell's fine, a former Nye County Commissioner, has been fined for failure to comply with the Nevada ethics law. Rory Rossell has the story. Former Nye County Commissioner Leo Blundell was fined for the failure to comply to the Nevada ethics law. The Nevada Commission of Ethics accepted a stipulated agreement during their April meeting Regarding the former Nye County Commissioner, this stipulated agreement that was approved a 3-1 to one vote on April 19th comes after the commissioners ruled for motions and a summary judgment on their 2023 March meeting. Blundo's case before the meeting stemmed from a failure to properly disclose his private interests and relation to enhancing the COVID relief funding for the Nye County businesses, including his own. The agreement includes two ethics violations, one which was found to be willful and the other one was non-willful under the Nevada ethics law. Mr. Blunda will be required to pay a $4,500 fine and will be receiving a reprimand from the commission. This is the first case in which the commission has found that a public officer or employee has violated the Nevada ethics law in relation to the COVID related funding. A motorcycle engulfed in flames was abandoned on the road late Thursday. David Preston has all the details. Pahrump Valley Fire and Rescue responded to a motorcycle engulfed in flames late yesterday on Leslie Street and Shady Lane in Pahrump. The bike was abandoned by the rider in the roadway. No injuries were reported. The burning bike and the person who left it on the roadway is under investigation. Legendary Pahrump matriarch Charlotte Floyd's first anniversary memorial service is going to be held this Saturday, April 29th at 10 a.m. at the First Southern Baptist Church, located at 741 East Fairs Way in Pahrump. Charlotte is the longtime wife of Ron Floyd, who died on April 11th at the age of 86. Ron Floyd passed away in 2013. The Floyd family arrived in Pahrump in 1962 with their young family, along with just a handful of other area families. They're considered the true pioneers of the Pahrump Valley. Charlotte founded the ever-popular Pahrump Fall Festival, which was originally named Harvest Festival, which is considered the largest event in the valley. In lieu of flowers, the family urges those who wish to donate to their favorite charities. Jerry Springer, host of a raucous talk show, has died at the age of 79 today. Jerry passed away after a brief illness, was confirmed in a statement by family and friend and executive producer of Mr. Springer's broadcast. Jerry, born as Gerald Norman Springer, was an American broadcaster, a journalist, an actor, producer, lawyer, and politician, former mayor of Cleveland, born in uh, London, England, during World War II to refugees escaping the Holocaust. Springer was raised in Queens, New York City. Rest in peace, Jerry Springer. Uh, when we return from the break, news from the Regional Planning Commission. Come right back. You're watching News 25, the most recognized and farthest reaching local news in Nye County. News 25, local news you can count on. Welcome back. The Regional Planning Commission has two vacancies. There are two vacancies on the Pahrump Regional Planning Commission. This board also sits as the Capital Improvements Advisory Committee for the Pahrump Regional Planning District. These vacancies are for expired terms to end June 2027. Applicants must live within Pahrump Regional Planning District. Nye County Commissioners are requesting applications and completed questionnaires from persons interested in filling these vacancies. An application and questionnaire may be obtained at the Pahrump Planning Office, 2041 East Calvetta Boulevard North, Suite 1, Pahrump, Nevada, 89048, or by calling 775-751-4245, or the Nye County Clerk Office, 1520 Basin Avenue, Pahrump, 89060 or by calling 775-482-7318. Please submit your application to the Nye County Clerk's Office, P.O. Box 1031, Tonopah, Nevada, 89049, no later than 5 p.m., Wednesday, May 17, 2023. Applications will not be accepted after that date. Nye County is an equal opportunity employer and provider. Well, May 1st has been approved for Pahrump Youth Law Awareness Day in the town of Pahrump. 
Project Real is a publicly funded, nonpartisan civics education nonprofit. We empower students with the knowledge of the law so they can achieve successful lives and make society safer for all. We requested this proclamation as a tool, a tool to help us serve students and young families throughout Nye County by helping them learn about the work we're here to do. In Southern Nye, our team has already served about 800 students in Pahrump last fall, and we look forward to returning next month. It's not just Pahrump, though, which is why I just want to offer a quick thank you to the Nye County uh, Truancy Officer, Robert Martinez. He's helped bring some of our behavior interventions and youth empowering experiences to Tonopah and other communities in Nye County. We're a small team of three in Las Vegas, and we have one intern in Reno, but we're committed to working statewide. We train teachers remotely and visit classrooms digitally as well as in person, and everything we do is free. Still, it is actions like this and the community rallying behind work to teach students their rights and responsibilities under the law that's opened doors for us to make Nevada safer for all. All of that being said, we hope and look forward to all of you seeing the impact we're having in Nye County in the coming months and to further serve more youth in the communities that you lead. Thank you. And I'd like to call for the vote, please. Aye. 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 15 passes 5-0. Congratulations, and thank you for doing what you do. Well, if you're into maximum enjoyment, Rebecca Lucas is here to invite everyone to Amargosa Days. Hi, my name is Rebecca Lucas. I'm the deputy town clerk for the town of Amargosa Valley. Uh, the town of Amargosa Valley is putting on our annual Amargosa Days Festival event. It is to celebrate the town and the where we began. What's going to happen at this event is we are going to have various rides, carnival games, a car show, a salsa contest. We will have food vendors, craft vendors, and a small rodeo. Um, this event will be taking place at the Amargosa Valley Town Park. It's right across the street from our community center on our main street. You can't miss it. And the event will be this weekend, Friday and Saturday, April 28th and 29th, starting at 2 p.m. on Friday and at 8 a.m. on Saturday. You know, there are many iconic neon signs in Las Vegas, and as part of the Hunter Ridge Theater rehabilitation, there was a ceremony around relighting the Hunter Ridge sign. Jay Dapper's plans for the Hunter Ridge Theater were revealed at the party. Also on hand were old photos of the Hunter Ridge Theater and old photos of the Hunter Ridge Theater concerts by photographer Mike Hill. Nancy Byrne from KCLV Channel 2 has this inspiring story. After decades of only being seen in daylight, the Huntridge sign can now once again be seen after dark. Jay Dapper, who purchased the old theater, was determined to refurbish the sign to coincide with the temporary opening of the Huntridge Theater. When we decided to open up the theater for the month of April to do tours, so that we can invite all of you in and kind of give you an idea of what we're doing. Then the idea came up that we were gonna light the sign and it was a crazy idea because it hasn't been lit for 20 years. It may have been a crazy idea, but he had a partner in crime for the lighting, an old friend from Yesco Signs. When we came out and we replaced about 20, 25 neon units. We replaced all the fluorescents in the marquee and turned them to LEDs with LED light bulbs. Um, in the raceway, and then we had to come back and replace a bunch of the plex panels to, to make them look decent. Thousands of fans of the old theater gathered on this April 7th night to celebrate this milestone in the renovation of this iconic building, including local leaders who are supporting Dapper's efforts. They used to think that the strip was where it's happening, but not anymore. Now it's downtown, it's Arts District, it's this area here in the heart of District 1, so I think it's very, very exciting. This is for you! That's why we work for you at the city! So the city is invested because we know you care, and it matters to all of us, so thank you so much for being out here. After the sign was lit, residents were able to step inside and see the beginnings of what will eventually be the new version of the old Huntridge. They were also able to walk down memory lane of what it was like in its heyday, thanks to these photos taken by photographer Mike Hill. I have a series of photos here taken in the 1990s, specifically 1993 to 1994, and mostly punk rock shows that I've been to 
ska shows and just the general culture that came through here. Hill was just starting out as a photographer and decided to try his hand at the craft here at the Huntridge Theater. He walked us through the exhibit, pointing out some of his favorites. I do love the spirit of this shot because it's just, I love the security guard, this girl looking up, this guy just throwing the horns. It's just so, it's just so punk rock. Without a doubt, it's my favorite shot. This and the other leaper. Just sums up the 90s. The pants, the chain wallet, the Adidas. In 1993 and 94, there were no cell phones, no Photoshop, yet he'll manage to still beautifully capture history with a camera and a flash. It's an honor to be you know, in this theater, and I never would imagine that 30 years later what I was shooting then would be here like this. It's surreal. Whether walking among the photographs or just being here at the Huntridge, Dapper says this just reaffirms bringing back the theater is the right thing to do. You know, it's exciting to see that people are as passionate about this as I am. And uh, I'm really glad to know that, you know, my, my, my thought of what this was, like, it wasn't crazy. What a great place with a great story. Well, coming up after the break, more news. Josh Osborne of Great Computer Deals will be here. Come on back. Watching News 25, brought to you by Mountain West Lawyer, Injury Attorneys, 727-9500. News 25, local news you can count on. Welcome back to News 25. Josh Osborne of Great Computer Deals explains keeping your expectations in check for low-end or older technology. Hey guys, Josh Osborne here with Rump Zone Great Computer Deals. Time for another quick tutorial. Today's topic, the most common issues we see at our computer repair center and how to avoid them, part five. Let's go ahead and wrap this topic up. You think the biggest technology issue that's facing our customers at this day and age would be their lack of computer knowledge, but that's actually not the case at all. You'd be surprised to find that over 50% of the problems that we help people solve are completely avoidable regardless of a customer's computer literacy. Today's last topic, having too high of expectations for low-end or older technology. Many people come into our store just frustrated because their device isn't fast enough or doesn't have all the bells and whistles that they were hoping for. Many times we can tell immediately why this is the case. It's normally caused by a low-end technology. We'll call it Walmart-level electronics or older technology, computers that are 10 plus years old. Remember the saying, can't get blood from a turnip? This is true with computers as well. You can't buy the cheapest thing on the shelf and then be surprised when it doesn't perform as well as the higher end, more expensive models. This is also true for older computers. You can't install the new Windows 11 on a machine built 15 years ago and expect it to run without issues. So how do we avoid these problems? Well, remember when dad used to say, you get what you pay for? This still holds true with just about everything. Purchasing name brand is usually the best option, but also being aware of the exact model you're getting as well. Just because there's a Dell, HP, or Samsung logo on your device doesn't make it good quality. Most tech companies produce high-end electronics with really good materials and low-end electronics where corners are cut to allow for a cheaper price tag. Do your research, read online reviews, Talk with professionals before investing in any computer, tablet, or smartphone. It'd be much better to save up and wait for a device that will last, as opposed to getting something cheap right away and regretting it very quickly. Do you guys still need some help? Well, come on down to our store. We're located at 1190 East Highway 372, across the street from Pizza Hut, and in the same plaza as Game Corner, Arcade, and Fun Center. Or give us a call, 775 990-8833. We're open from Monday through Friday, 9 to 3. Anyway, that's it for today's lesson. I will catch you guys on the next one. Hi, welcome back. In health news, uh, you know, flossing your teeth can sometimes seem like a chore, but it's an important part of dental hygiene. And believe it or not, heart health. Cleveland Clinic periodontist Dr. Sasha Ross explains why. 
there's a lot of studies that have talked about, at least for periodontal disease, the connection between gum disease and heart health. And there's really a very strong association between the two, um, where patients that have periodontal disease are at a much greater risk for having, you know, heart disease and uh, stroke, other issues like that. Research shows the association could be due in part to periodontal or gum disease leading to inflammation and bacteria in the heart. With that being said, Dr. Ross notes the risk really depends on the person. She says she's had some people who barely floss or brush and have no problems whatsoever, whereas others can have the smallest amount of plaque and go on to experience major complications. Dr. Ross says they can also tell when someone is not flossing. For example, they may have bleeding or swollen gums, loose teeth, lots of plaque buildup, cavities, bad breath, and gum recession. So what can someone do to help prevent that? I think a lot of people are never taught how to properly floss and what kind of floss to use. So at one of these visits, you know, we can work with you and show you how to do it. Um, and then just make it part of your daily routine. You know, I say it's really good to floss once a day. So ideally you do it at night before you go to bed. Dr. Ross says there are other products available that may help you if you're having trouble flossing, like using a water pick or specialized brushes that can clean between your teeth. When we return, uh, weather cam and weather news, come on back. News 25 Weather Cam is brought to you by Lerner and Rowe Injury Attorney's Office in Pahrump. In a wreck, need a check? Call 702-877-1500. Gorgeous day in Nye County. Oh, look at the uh, partly cloudy skies, light winds, hot temperatures. Good stuff on the way for this weekend. We'll have a complete weather report from Mike Ruhan after this. News 25 weather is brought to you by Dairy Council of Nevada. Undeniably delicious, undeniably dairy. Enjoy what's real. Hi, good evening, Nevada. I'm Mike Ruhan from the Channel 25 Weather Studios and worldwide on the local VTV app, the app you should get. Fernley and Fallon, weather twins, 82 degrees, Carson City, 80. Tonopah, you're our Cool Spot Award winner at 76 degrees, 78 in Goldfield, Beatty saw 88 degrees. Amargosa, 92 degrees, you're the Hot Spot Award. Las Vegas, close behind at 90, and Death Valley, triple digits, 103. But here in the paradise of Pahrump, let's take a look. Our current temperature is 88 degrees. We saw 90 just a little bit earlier. 8% humidity, winds out of the west-northwest at 11 miles per hour. Sunrise was at 5.58 a.m., setting this evening at 7.27 p.m. Look for it under clear skies, low dropping down to 59 degrees, humidity at 69%. How does that set us up, set us up for the rest of the week? Look at that. Partly cloudy tomorrow, 92 degrees. 96 on Sat uh, so uh, yeah, Saturday, 94 on Sunday. Then Monday, a lot of winds, huh? 21 miles per hour. Tuesday, dropping down to 76, 77 on Wednesday, then 71 on Thursday. So make your plans for this weekend. It's going to be a warm one. And that's your weather from Channel 25. Thanks, Mike. Boy, it's uh, nice to see you being an all-fields player. You do sports, you do technical directing, you do this. You're amazing. Anyway. Uh, that's the news for tonight. A special extra bonus for you tonight. And uh, I don't know that anybody's ever done this before, but we have passes here. Uh, and I'm going to put them into family four packs. If you dial the number 775-727-9400, you're cordially invited to bring you and your family. And we'll give you up to four to the 43rd annual San Gennaro Feast. It's Italian and international uh, music and uh, culture and dance and fun stuff going on there. It's at the M Resort. Uh, they got it going from May 10th through the 14th, and uh, just a ton of fun, excellent food. If you like Italian food, if you like Italian culture and music, uh, that's where you're going to find it. It's uh, and We've got VIP passes for you at 775-727-9400. We'll give away four packs until they're gone, um, and, but really this is going to be a fantastic festival. I think you'll really enjoy it, so uh, and, uh, looking forward to seeing you there perhaps, all right? All right, that's the news for this evening. I'm John Kohler filling in for you, Gentry. Good night.